Hi everyone, uh, we are going to start with Yale Invitational 2023 American Parliamentary Training. Uh, today we are going to discuss about the basic structure and role fulfillment. Uh, but even before that, let's just understand the categories and rounds. Um, so it's an open tournament, which means that there are no like categories. You will have people from all age groups, specifically from 6 to 12 standard. Um, you might have people who are elder to that as well. So just know that your preparation should be in such a way that um, you are able to take down whichever category, whichever uh, age group that you're going against, uh, which only comes with like extreme, extreme practice. Um, so that's the first thing I wanted to make clear. The second thing that is, is that you're, you're going to have five preliminary rounds. Um, so preliminary rounds basically means irrespective of whether you win or lose, you are going to um, debate five rounds. Um, which is why, again, it's not based on your performance. It's based on that, yes, you are going to debate five rounds. Um, again, the better you perform, the more ability you have to actually um, qualify to the outcomes. Now, I think the thing that you, you were told was that you're going to have your debates from 29th to 1st of October, but it's not going to be the, that this, this way because I just checked the schedule specifically for public, for, specifically for American parliamentary. Um, I'm so sorry, just like ignore that. So specifically from, um, for American parliamentary, it says that um, it's going to start at 9 a.m. ET Saturday, which is 6 p.m. IST for you. So 6 p.m. on the Saturday, it's going to start. So I'm guessing all of your rounds are going to be on Saturday. So all five rounds happen on Saturday. Um, then on Sunday, if you qualify, you're going to start your rounds from 1 a.m., which is actually Monday. So just like take that into account. But I think it does, does not matter because like 2nd October is also you know, a holiday for you. So it's going to start 3.30 p.m. ET there. But for you, it's going to be 1 a.m. That's the next day. So just remember that. So 1 a.m. on technically is the Saturday night. But like in reality, it's basically Monday morning. Um, so try to understand that as well. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of rounds. Do you guys have any questions? No questions. Let's move forward. Um, I think I'm actually just a second. Cool. Um, so in terms of the format, then you have um, you have two versus two, and the way how the flow works is this. So government, you have government and opposition. Government speaker one speaks first, then opposition speaker one, then government speaker two, then opposition speaker two, and then opposition speaker one and government speaker one. So this is the flow. Um, I'll tell you specifically what the the terms are called in a bit, but just know this is the form. This is the way how you're supposed to um, go with the structure. So the speaker one from government speaks first, gives the, the first constructive speech. Opposition speakers, six speaker one goes next, gives this constructive speech. The second speech from government is actually a deconstructing speech or, or reconstructing speech. And then the second speaker from opposition goes next, followed by the opposition speaker one. So the only place where the point of order is changing is um, in the third set, where the first speaker of opposition gives the reply or speech first and then followed by the government. I think it's just simple and similar to why um, opposition reply in WSDC gives first speech, and then government reply gives the second, second speech. Um, then what exactly is the structure of format? Because I'll use the short forms from now on and not the exact big term. So government has two, de like, two debaters. The first speaker is called prime minister or PM. The second speaker is called member of government or MG. Opposition has two debaters again. Leader of opposition is LO. The second speaker is member of opposition or MO. There are three kinds of speeches. One is constructive speech C. Second is reconstruction. Third is reply speech R. So constructive speeches are C. Reply speeches are R. Just so you, just so that you know. Um, I'm also going to use the abbreviation. So in case if you have any doubts here, just like let me know right now. Um. I will assume that as no, just like try to keep your head straight and then remember all of this. So this is how the flow of speeches then looks. First, you have PMC, which means Prime Minister Constructive Speech, follow, which is going to be for seven minutes, followed by Leader of Opposition Constructive Speech, which is going to be for eight minutes. 
After that, you have member of government's reconstructive speech. Um, I've not put R because it's going to be confusing for you, LOR and PMR. Um, so then followed by member of government gives eight minutes of speech. Then member of opposition again gives eight minutes of speech. Then you have LOR, uh, which is leader of opposition's rebuttal or reply, which is for four minutes. And PMR, which is prime minister's rebuttal or reply, which is for five minutes. Um, the difference here in terms of other debates format that we've done is that the grace period that you get there is 15 seconds, but the grace period that you get here is 30 seconds. So you can actually extend your speeches till seven minutes, 30 seconds, um, or eight minutes, 30 seconds, four minutes, 30 seconds. Uh, but then this is what it is. Um, so collectively as a team, the amount of time that you get is, is eight plus eight plus four, which is 16 plus four, 20 minutes. Is there any question uh, with respect to the time? I will again assume that as no. So what is the motion? Um, so motions are very similar to the way how you get motions in British Parliamentary, WSDC, um, and Asian Parliamentary. It's all impromptu. You don't get prepared motion at all, like WSDC though. So you have 15 minutes of prep time and the motion changes every passing round. Um, so your motion again is the topic that you that you use. Um, the motion are also informal at times, so you don't have to stick with the formality of WSDC. It can be literally anything. So it can be international relations, economics, philosophy, social justice movements, media, um, government, constitutional law, politics, art, science, literature, literally anything. So all of these are popular topics. Um, and I think the way how you can um, actually make sure that you remember and you are being able to like um, practice is first and the most important way is case prep. So call your partner whenever you guys are free and it's only for 15, uh, 15 minutes exercise. So call your partner, um, go to hello motions, pick out a random motion, set timer for 15 minutes and then start talking to each other as to what arguments would you run if you were proposition and what argument would you run if you were opposition. Pick random sides. And then try to understand so this is the case that we're going to run. This is the argument that, I'm, that we are going to run. This is the reasonings that we're going to run in that. This is going to be the analysis. This is going to be the example, et cetera, et cetera. So this is how the motion in American parliamentary works. So how do you understand these motions? Um, I think I will tell you anything and everything in terms of your skills that you use in WSDC and parliamentary debates are going to be applicable here as well. I'm not repeating what skills they are because you've done it enough um, and you know what kinds of arguments you're, you're going to use. So firstly, understand the basic concepts of the motion. You would know the motion and then you would try to apply, let's say if it's an economic motion, you would try to apply like, the basic economic principles that you know, market supply, etc. But then the second thing that you need to know is that anything like in terms of uh, parliamentary argument that you run, so for example, principles, pragmatics, uh, practical arguments, stakeholders, everything is relevant here as well. Um, so every other rule of parliamentary debate speech actually applies here as well. So defining, characterization, counter definition, arguments, reasoning, example, impact, rebuttal, slashes, all of it is something that you're gonna use in, in American parliamentary as well. It is a parliamentary debate. It has to be similar to parliamentary debates. The only thing that's different is structure. Um, so, and also like prep time, I think 15 minutes. Um, but this is a very, uh, like very interesting and very elaborate version of how your speaker rules are gonna be. Um, so PMC is Prime Minister Constructive Speech again. Um, the first thing that you need to note in all speeches is that you're supposed to start your speeches with intro. So introduction can be literally anything. It could be rhetorical. It could be you making a general um, observation of the round. It could be you making making like a general allegation completely on the opponents. You, it could be your observation in terms of flaw of your opponents. It could be literally anything. You can go wild. Uh, but the P, let's start with the PMC speech then. Um, so the PMC or the constructive speech for the government is going to look like um, you presenting case statement. So case statement is what do you think is the understanding of this motion and how do you want to frame it? Now, after the case statement, you're supposed to necessarily take a point of clarification. Um, so point of clarification is you offering that, listen, opponents ask me a question or ask me a point of clarification. It's not the other way around. You're not going to like let the opponent say that point of clarification. In your speech, when you're done with your introduction and interpretation characterization, you're supposed to ask, is there any point of clarification? Clarification is your, a question based on your statement and your framing that you have done uh, for the motion. So they can ask you to reinterpret the motion. They can ask you to justify why you have a certain framing. Um, so this is what is the difference of point of 
clarification. Then you're supposed to give case points. Um, case points is literally arguments. So argument number one, argument number two, argument number three. And then again, conclusion. Um, so constructive speech is very, very same to prime minister's speech. So just remember, if you know prime minister's speech or the first speaker in WSDC, that's what you're supposed to do. Now, after uh, PMC is LOC, Leader of Opposition's uh, Constructive Speech. So what you do here is that you introduce, like you again, like give an introduction, but then you give independent points of analysis. Now, independent points of analysis is your positive case on opposition. So you're going to give exactly the same as Leader of Opposition you would do in like any, any parliamentary WSDC format. You would give, let's say, three arguments as to why um, I think opposition is a better side. And then you will move forward with deconstruction. So deconstruction is, it is with respect to any kinds of rebuttals that you want to give to the case points that your proposition has given. So um, if government has given case point one, this is how you are going to be deconstructed. In simple terms, it's rebuttal. Um, so yeah. The leader of opposition's constructive speech is going to look like two things. One, giving a positive case like any other lead leader of opposition. Second, giving rebuttals to the, the points that your the first speaker has given. Um, I would suggest focus more on positive side than rebuttals because your second speaker anyways is supposed to give a, a lot of rebuttals and de like reconstruction and deconstruction anyways. Um, but however, more rebuttals, better, the better it is. Um, then you have a member of government's constructive speech where you basically go ahead and deconstruct and reconstruct. So the two things that the member of government is, and I think that's for the second speakers irrespective. So one, you're supposed to rebuild arguments. Now, what rebuilding of arguments look like or reconstructing the arguments look like is that add on more, ex more examples, more reasonings, more material to the existing arguments that are already being given by the first speaker. But secondarily, you can also go ahead and rebuild. What rebuilding means is that even if opposition said this, we think our point still stands, and this is the reasons for that. So this is what you're going to do in the in the member of government speech. Uh, but also, you can give like a new point if you want to. So that's called independent point of analysis. So you can basically give a new argument altogether if you want. Then member of opposition um, in the constructive member of opposition then is going to go ahead and give um, like the similar way. So independent point of analysis if you want to, you can rebut if you want to, and then you can go ahead and reconstruct your arguments. So in general, member of government and member of opposition have three um, roles. One, give an extra argument or a new argument altogether. Second, you can rebut to the points that you have listened so far. Third, you can give rebuilding and reconstruction. So give more reasoning to the existing arguments that exist give more reasons as to why you shouldn't believe in opponent's case um, and why irrespective of whatever opponents have said, your point still stands. Then moving on to the LOR or reply or rebuttal speech. So this is where you mostly respond to all claims by your opponents. So respond to why, whatever, like you respond to every single thing that they have made till now, like the concrete idea of it. And then you say as to why you win the debate. So reply speeches in this particular or reply, rebuttal speeches, LOR, PMR, are basically like reply speeches in WSDC. You would identify an issue. You would tell as to why you win all of these clashes and why, again, at the end of the day, you have your better uh, paradigm to live in at the end of the day. Um, are there any questions on speaker roles then? I'm going to have specifically... Um, um, I had a question. Yeah. So for the point of clarification, is that for both first speakers? No, it's just for the PM. Okay, and it's like you, uh, if someone asks for it, you can't reject it. You just like no, you can't. Yeah, you can't reject it. And is there like a limit to how many questions can be asked? No, it's only one. So like point of clarification. Okay, by the way, uh, in point of clarification, your time stops. So your time is not counted anymore. Like, let's say. At one minute, you were asked for a point of clarification. The minute, like the timer stops right then and there, and then the questions continue. So it's going to be only one question, obviously, and you're, then you're supposed to answer it, and then your timer uh, reconvenes after that. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yes. Um, who has raised? Aras. Okay, so I have a couple of questions. So then, hmm. uh, there's only one point of clarification. Your 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 voice is really really low. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. 
Yeah, okay. So there's only one point of clarification. So there are no POIs at all? Like I will tell you. There are POIs. There are three kinds of POIs, actually. So one is point of clarification, one is point of information, and one is point of order. I will explain okay. that separately. Okay, my next question was, so do we have to follow the specific order? Or uh, no. like the no. MGC and MOC speeches, can we do like a rebuttal before our argument? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do anything. You can get creative. It's just so you know, so you know the way how each like the just the components of each and um, thirdly uh can we also like provide models yes you can in the this house would yes okay thank you yes Siddharth. yeah so we have to ask our opposition for a point of clarification right yes you're supposed to ask it by yourself okay and can because we I mean, otherwise the opponents won't know when your framing is done right so you are supposed to offer it by yourself Okay, and can we ask for a point of clarification any time during our debate? No, point of clarification only in the first speech, only in Prime Minister. Okay, and uh, can we refrain from asking a point of clarification? I mean, the better thing is to, to ask a point of clarification because you okay. would want to show the judge that you're engaging. Understood, got it. Thank you. Ishan. Uh, so if you're asking, if we're opposition and if the PM says point of clarification then uh, suppose do we have to like question their defining and characterization because what else have they done before the first minute right yeah yeah so it's just on like their understanding and interpretation of motion only so if you think that there's okay. something extremely extremely long with wrong in the way how they're like it, like understanding the motion you should question it right there and there but it will also be the case that you don't have any point of clarification just say that no we don't have any point of clarification okay got it thank you Cool. Um, so just like generally going here then. So constructive speech, introduction, case, reason, justification, and conclusion. Um, I would say and suggest run at least three independent lines of argumentation. Under each independent lines of argumentation, run at least two to four reasonings. And under each argument, again, give at least one example or illustration. Um, this is for you to have an extremely tight case, which is important. So um, a tight case in American parliamentary debate means a case that is very strong. So I think this is very important for you to understand in that regard. Um, I also think that judges in general love the way how you structure your reasoning. So my first argument is this. My first reasoning for this is this. My second reasoning, third reasoning, fourth reasoning. And then this is the example after that. And this is the impact of that reasoning. Um, I think this is a very good way to persuade the judges. Um, then re like the reconstruction, reconstruction or constructive speech in general. Um, introduction, reconstruct case, give reasons and justification again, give conclusion. Run at least two different reasonings on each existing argument. So refer back to the argument that, the, that was given by your first speaker, give different reasons to that. Then rebuild, which means that if you have had attacks from opponents on your case, give more reasoning as to why you should still believe in what you are saying as proposition or position. Then you have, again, give new examples, give new illustrations. But then at the end of the day, you can also give a new argument entirely. So yeah, um, again, respond to the arguments of your opponents. Then reply, um, respond to all claims of opposition, give reasons and justifications for that, and prove as to why you win the debate. Um, it's as simple as that. But I want to, again, like, re like show you as to how rebuttals are done. Um, so I think one, you turn the analysis of your opponents. So there are two kinds of rebuttals, actually. One is competing rebuttal and one is contradictory rebuttal. So competing rebuttal is something where you actually claim the same thing as your opponents, but you tell that you do it better. For example, opposition says that minorities' rights are going to be better off in their side. So what you do is that, listen, yes, we think that minority rights are important, which is why we, we think that we do it much better than them. And then you give extra pieces of analysis to why you do it better. So whenever there is a competing rebuttal, you're supposed to say two things. One, why is that particular thing not good in their side of the house? But also you tell us to why it's more likely to happen better in your side of the house. So the way how judges are then going to compare that argument is going to be based on who proves, them, like, proves it to them better or who has more analysis and more reasoning for the judge to be convinced by that competing rebuttal. But the second kind of rebuttal is contradictory rebuttal, where you basically go ahead and contradict anything that your opponents say. Opponents say so you can. It could be like a disproving rebuttal. It could be like a rebuttal where you're basically like proving the entire opposite of what they're saying. Um, it could be literally you proving the links are missing, the reasonings are less, all of that. So you're just contradicting what your opponents are saying. So you could also basically say, sure, whatever opponents are saying is fine, but. 
I think um, in in the way how like the weighing of the debate works, or in the way how uh, whether or not it's most important in the debate, I think that's not true. And you can establish to why other things are more important. So that's what you're going to do in terms of rebuttal. This, but coming to POI, POC, POO, um, point of clarification is something that's already told. I have already told you. Um, so PM must offer POC post step setup and introduction. Um, you stop and then you ask if opponent if your opposition has a point of clarification. Um, the second is point of information, which is very like, exactly the same as parliamentary and WSDC, which can be asked in first to last minute of the speech. Um, so again, all of the rules of point of information stays the same. Then you have point of order. Point of order is is something that you ask when you think there has been a violation of rule of American parliamentary debate in the debate. Um, for example, violation could look like the speaker has spoken more than seven minutes, 30 seconds. You're going to start, you're going you're gonna to be point of order, the speak, and then the, um, you're going to be asked what happened. And then you're going to say that the speaker has spoken more than seven minutes, 30 seconds. Um, for example, you get a new argument in reply speech. You can be like point of order. The speaker is introducing a new argument which has not been given from the initial speeches, something like that. So point of argument, point of order is just you giving, um, like you telling the judges that the like the op the opponents have violated a rule. So it's really important for you to not violate any rules, uh, because I think um, it's just like a way of like clear call out. So yeah. Any questions here then? No questions. Um, examples of Asian Parli American parliamentary debate um, motions. American parliamentary debate motions can be this house word, this house spots, this house opposes, this house believes that. Basically, every single motion that we have seen till now. Um, it could be fantasy motions as well. Um, so anything basically. But I have noticed one common pattern in American parliamentary format, and that is it being America centric. Um, so try to read more about U.S. politics, um, U.S. military, U.S. international relations if you can, because I think you have so much more idea about what is happening in U.S. Um, but I think it just gives so much more ability to, let's say, the people like the Native Americans, but like also the like, students from America who are going to participate um, to know much more about their own country. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think the first thing that you need to do in terms of your like research and like a prep for the tournament is that know more about U.S.A. Um, so that you can run good arguments, uh, but also more context and more matter um, because you can't use Google, obviously, during the debates, um, but also you can't use any kind of research material that you have. So probably try to know all of these things before and try to have conversations about it with your partners as much as possible. So motions, international motions, and like motions which are centric to US are more likely to come. But I mean, I think because it's it runs on theme-based rounds, um, it's also likely that you won't get all motions, all rounds based on America. You are also likely to get, you also are likely to get motions um, which are related to let's say literature or minorities, so social justice movements, et cetera. And that's actually pretty much it for today's class. Are there any doubts or questions?